What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of really cool stuff that is coming soon to Blade HQ. Uh, I haven't done this in a while and I was kind of, it's because I was waiting for some new things that I hadn't shown to pop up on their uh, list of uh, items coming soon. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm really excited to talk about this. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, why would I need to watch an entire video when I can just go look for myself? Absolutely, 100%. In fact, I will link this exact page right at the top of the description of this video so you do, that you can easily just click on it and go look through. If you don't want to hear my commentary on this, that's totally fine. I'm just going to be going through highlighting some things that I find interesting. Uh, anything that uh, is, it really um, you know pops out at me, I will link uh, individually also down in the description so you can click right to it rather than having to go through and navigate for yourself. Thanks so much to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. If you'd like to check out Patreon, there's of course a link for that down in the description. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. The first one right off the bat here, the Benchmade 945 BK-1 Mini Osborne Axis Lock. This definitely looks cool. I think a lot of people are totally aware that this is a thing, right? A tiny Osborne. I'm honestly kind of surprised that they didn't do this a long time ago. Um, we have 6.76 inches overall, 2.92 inches on the blade. CPM S30V. This is G10 and the blue. Ooh, I actually didn't know that the, <laughs> I didn't know that the, they did the blue G10 liner thing. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to guess the weight on this guy is basically nothing. Um, I think it's got that low, that ultra low pro. No, does it? No, it has another weird Come on, Benchmade. <laughs> that clip. Ah, fortunately, it looks like you can put whatever clip you want on that thing because it's a standard three-hole uh, clip. But yeah, this looks really cool. The price isn't bad. 174.25, right? Compared to other Benchmade knives, I think this is, you know, pretty. That's a docile price. Uh, I, I think that's pretty cool. We've taken a look at the small fly. We've taken a look at the tenacious lightweight in the S35VN, right? Next up here, yeah, all these spider codes we've already kind of seen. The uh, Mastodon. So I have this knife right now. <laughs> this is crazy. It's huge. It is literally a giant folding meat cleaver. Um, I like it. It's completely and totally unnecessary. And definitely for people who just enjoy the novelty of like big, crazy, aggressive knives. But at the same time, I mean, it is something that you definitely can use, right? Um, it doesn't, I don't think it's going to translate perfectly as a food prep folding knife, right? But it is cool. And the blade is so big and heavy that it just flips like it's so powerful. There's such a, an enormous amount of recoil off that flip. Really cool. Spider Coast Salts. I'm still looking for one of these for review, and I'm wondering if they've actually even released. I felt like there was a wave of them that came out. The Salt, this one right here in particular, the Atlantic Salt um, and the uh, Pacific Salt with no serrations. Um, those are definitely knives that I'm interested in taking a look at. Maybe I'm mistaken. I thought a bunch of them came out. If you've got one and you wouldn't mind letting me review it, just contact me on Instagram. Um, let's see here. The next one up that I really wanted to take a look. That's the uh, mini Mastodon, which I haven't handled, but I'm sure it's exactly what it says. Just a small version of the Mastodon. Moving down here, the next one. I can't remember if it was on this page or the next one. Ah, yes. There we go. I'm sure plenty of people are aware of this too. The 940 in CPM M4. Is that the best blade steel for this knife? I don't know. M4, we don't see enough of it, right? There are super steels that are out now that, you know, some people say, you know, are better compositions than M4 with the, for the same idea. But I think CPM M4 still definitely holds a place in the modern knife world as a, uh, a great super steel. If you live in an area like me, like Kansas... Uh, M4 is fine. Don't be afraid of M4. Uh, I can't speak for people who live, you know, further east or west than me, but in, in this area, yeah, I've had no problems with M4 or steels like K390, Maxim, non-stainless steels, right? Um, I think this is cool, especially because of the Jade G10 or the translucent G10. I think that looks awesome. Um, 195 bucks. Uh, by the way, I mean, if you're interested in any of these, you just click on email me when available or text me when available um, so that you can be ready to go. I just like to make people aware of this. I'm recording this on a Friday morning. You guys are seeing this on Saturday morning. I'm trying to do this as, 
you know, I'm trying to pre-record it to be ready, but uh, hopefully all of this stuff, is this is all still accurate information by the time you guys are seeing it. Moving on here, I believe the next one I want to highlight is one that, uh, uh, well, there's a, there's one that I missed, actually. The Three Rivers Neutron Liner Lock, the Black G10. Um, no picture, but I know that the uh, the TRM Neutron is certainly a, a popular knife, um, so check that one out if you want to. The next one up, uh, SOCOM Elite Manuals are coming back. There's no pictures here, but I know how badly people want to get their hands on uh, a SOCOM Elite Manual. So they've got a Tanto, and they've got the standard, like the OD Green, with the, it looks like probably a drop point, and it looks like a whole bunch of them are coming, right? SOCOM Elite Manual, OD Green, OD Green, Stonewash, Satin, right? Whole bunch of them. If you've been looking for a SOCOM Elite manual, the standard production version that's 275 to 285 bucks apparently, then there you go. It looks like they're coming, so that's something you're probably going to want to click email me on uh, if uh, you know that's something you're interested in. I will make sure that that one is linked right down below. Next one up, I'm looking for it here. I know some people are like, why don't you edit this to cover? I don't know, because I want people to be able to see things. If even if I'm not highlighting it, right, it doesn't mean that people aren't going to be interested. Yeah, the pintail. Is that right? Yeah, this looks interesting. This one specifically right here, um, I think was the one that caught my eye. I really like this micarta. This looks like micarta to me. Yeah, green micarta and the black uh, blade. L the contrast there looks really nice to me. Seven inches overall, three inches on the blade length. CPM S35 VN for 8330 on this version. That's pretty cool. Definitely interesting to me. Obviously, I haven't handled it yet. Uh, and then there's some different versions. Carbon fiber in Damascus, right? Um, but yeah, I think these are all going to be S35 VN. Here's another one that definitely caught my eye. I'm a big fan of this faux bolstered look, right? This is uh, the same thing as the, uh, very similar to the Ortis. Um, seven, this is the CVV Badland, 7.5 inches overall, 3.25 inches on the blade, 9CR18 MOV, which is fine. The only thing I don't like, which is probably going to be the same thing with the, oh, I have the Ortis coming in two different forms. I don't like FRN, but man, that, that faux bolstered look that they've got, that's, that's pretty nice looking. I would just die to see that in G10 and S35VN for about 80 bucks. God dang, that would be just great. It's still very interesting to me, though. If you don't mind FRN, right? FRN is fine. Here's the thing. I always say this. There's nothing wrong with FRN in terms of durability, dependability, right? I just don't like how it feels. I like the feeling of G10 better, but for people, you know, wondering like, oh, does that mean that it's not durable? No, it's plenty durable. I have an old video that shows that FRN is plenty durable. Uh, Pena X Series Barlow. These are the production versions. This is a nice looking knife for sure. Uh, 6.75 inches overall, three inches on the blade. Bowler M390, and we have a combination of what looks like marble carbon fiber, and this is almost certainly titanium. Um, that's pretty cool. Nice little, uh, looks like a little front flipper. Pretty interesting. I know that those were really popular, or that the, the Pena uh, X-Series knives are always really popular. Uh, the Kaiser Azo Vanguard Series bag litter. Well, this is a bag litter in um, Micarta and CTS BD1. This was a very popular knife when it originally came out, and I'm sure it'll be popular in Micarta. And uh, again, I'm clicking on the, um, I, they call, they're calling this oat green Micarta. So it looks brown to me, which is, I think, the way that it actually looks, you know, in, in actual, in, in real life. Um, but I really like this combination of the sort of, acidy washed black and uh the micarta i really like that 79 dollars in cts bd1 i think that that's a pretty good price and if you don't like that they've got some other versions of it here um this is the is that the large no is this the this is the small oh the ozo is it smaller yes who am i <laughs> no it says why does it say 2.8 inches that's wrong 2.8 inches is wrong. 8.125 inches is what they have it listed as overall length. I'm not sure if that's the large one or the small one. I've seen a couple of little errors here and there. So, I don't know. In any case, it sure looks interesting. Boy, that's a good looking one right there. The black micarta and the black blade. That's really nice. Moving on here, one that definitely, 
definitely, absolutely has my interest. The Civivi Trailblazer with a steel bolster, and I'm going to guess that this is uh, black G10. Man, that is good looking. Oh, my goodness. 14C28N, I have no problem with that steel. It's a smaller knife, though. 6.875 inches overall and a 3-inch blade. Still really cool. Man, I bet I'll like this. I'm guess I'm definitely going to want to take a look at this when it comes out. Um, but I can almost guarantee my thoughts are going to be, this is great, make an 8-inch eight, version of this, right? Um, very similar handle profile to like the Benchmade Griptilian. Um, but that, again, that bolster look is really cool. Uh, I, I just, man, the profile of this is awesome. I'm really hoping you can get at that slot there so you can do the reverse flick. I'm, I'm certain that you can. Yeah, it does say G10 on the handle. Oh, this is a slip joint. I did not I did not realize that. Let's read here. The Trailblazer from Civivi has a slim profile, making it an easy choice for your everyday carry. It flaunts a stainless steel handle with a black G10 onlay. Black G10 onlay. Interesting. <laughs> I've never I don't I've never used that word uh, for to describe that. Uh, the blade is a drop point style uh, in gray stonewash, 14C, 28N steel. This slip joint knife is lightweight, comfortable, and open smoothly with the thumb slit. More info coming soon. So there you go. It's a slip joint. Okay. Um, I'd like to see that as a locking knife and a little bit bigger. Um, but it's it's interesting. Um, so, okay. Yeah, there you go. Uh, CVV rip, liner lock. Uh, kind of interesting. This one's kind of neat. The M2 backup. Uh, little fixed blades. Like a little three-inch fixed blades. Kind of neat. Really uh, dressy. Um, uh, uh, I think these are also slip joints. I'm guessing. It looks like the uh, that gentlemanly version uh, that they did a while back. Uh, layer G10 features a Damascus steel blade. Hand rub the back stainless steel lighter. So it's a slip joint. Yeah, it's a slip joint. Okay, just a really really dressy version of the. Oh gosh, I can't remember what that one was that I handled. But interesting. There's a whole bunch of different versions of that, so that's cool. Um, let's see here. I think there's just a couple left that I really wanted to highlight. Yeah, look at these kite fins. Oh my gosh, let's look at this. God dang. Uh, this is gold shred carbon fiber on the kite fin from Wee Knife CPM 20 CV. Very beautiful. Man, it's, it, you don't often see that material for, for 200. Um, I mean, normally what we're seeing that material on are, you know, semi-customs and full custom knives. Oftentimes you'll see that in, you know, U.S. made knives and they cost a lot more money because of where they're made and how they're made. But uh, it's kind of interesting to see that material on a production knife from We Obviously that reduces the price substantially um, for, you know, $199.75 is what we're looking at here. Some people are going to look at that and go, absolutely yes. And some people are going to look at that and go, I have no interest in that whatsoever, which is honestly the case with everything, right? Um, but yeah, I, the kite fin was popular, so I think that some people will be interested in this. That's pretty cool. Um, there's also, of course, we didn't click into it, but the copper shred version, which, gosh, honestly, I think the copper shred looks better. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like that better. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, not a, I mean, if you really want to carry a super flashy EDC knife, right? Uh, that's very EDC oriented, very thin behind the behind the uh, edge, but you want it to be really, you know, show off EP cocky and and uh, uh, very pocket jewelry esque. Then yeah, there you go. Um, and then I think the last one on the list that I really <laughs> wanted to take a look at here was this mini Truidon. That's cool. Uh, this will undoubtedly be very expensive. Um, I'm I'm gonna guess this thing's gonna come in at at least 250 bucks, maybe more. Be happy if it came in less, but I doubt it. Probably looking at 204P steel. It's essentially just a super stubby little teeny tiny version of the Truodon or Troodon, however you want to say that. 5.45 inches overall blade length is 1.99 inches, which is obviously going to solve issues for people living in areas where you can't carry OTFs that are longer than a certain mark. What is it? 2.5 inches, three inches, maybe two inches in some area. I don't know. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's kind of neat little pocket EDC, uh, like little micro EDC switchblade. Um, let's see here. Let me read a little bit more. 
The newly announced Microtech Troodon Mini is coming soon to your favorite online destination, Blade HQ. Click on the email me button. Obviously, yeah, click on the email if you want to. Satin finished Tanto Blade. Uh, yeah, blah, finished Steel Glassberry. Okay, so yeah, uh, it's exactly what you'd think it is. Let's take a look at the pocket clip. There you go. It's going to sink almost entirely. It's like 70% of the knife is going to sink into your pocket. Um, but yeah, that's neat. Interesting. Probably not something that I would pick up for myself. I like the full-size ones because we can carry whatever size of OTF we want here in Kansas. But yeah, guys, that's going to be pretty much it. I'll link the stuff again, you know, right down in the description. I'll link the stuff that I highlighted and thought was really, really interesting. Um, you can click on that or you can just click through um, the, uh, the first link, which will take you to this page. And then you can go back and look at whatever it is that you want to, right? Um, anyways, though, um, I hope you guys found this at least mildly entertaining. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.